This video is going to demonstrate how to make Premiere Pro get a little bit better performance. If we go to the menu bar and go to where File is, we want to go to Project Setting and then go to General. I have a Mac Mini, so I want this to be set at Software Only. If I try and use OpenCL or Metal, it'll just mess up my system. However, if you have an iMac with a dedicated graphics card, or if you have a Mac Pro, you might want to switch one of the other options on. But like I said, I've got a Mac Mini, so I definitely want the, this Mercury Playback Engine in software-only mode. A lot of you can probably tell I'm on a Windows PC. I'm using Microsoft's Task Manager to monitor my CPU, as well as both of my GPUs. GPU Zero is the integrated graphics processor that's on the Intel CPU itself. This particular graphics processor does have Intel's QuickSync, which can help play back and render H.264 video clips. We can also see my NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070. If I hit play, we'll notice that it can play back this particular sequence fairly easy. These video files are all 2.7K video files or H.264. We can tell the CPU is not being used hardly at all. The integrated graphics processor from Intel is being used at about 30% because the Intel QuickSync can help encode and decode H.264 video. That's why it's being used quite a lot. And then we see the GPU is being used quite a lot as well, my uh, RTX 2070 GPU. And that's because there's color correction and LUTs applied to all these video clips. So Making use of Intel's QuickSync can be beneficial if you're using H.264 video codec. If you're playing back Red One or Apple ProRes, it's not going to help at all. So that's one thing that you can enable to give you a little bit better performance when using Premiere Pro. You have to enable the integrated graphics processor from Intel within the BIOS of your motherboard. There's no way to really turn this on and off within Premiere Pro. I've demonstrated that my particular computer setup is making use of two graphics processors. That can cause problems and lead to real poor performance if things are not set up 100% correct within Premiere Pro. You want to go to the menu bar where it says File. You want to scroll down to where it says Project Setting. You want to select General. Here we have the option to use the Mercury Playback Engine using CUDA or we can use OpenCL. With my setup, we want to use CUDA. We're going to use my RTX 2070 to do the picture-in-picture, -picture, color correction, motion blur, any of the special effects basically. We have the OpenCL as well, but if we do choose OpenCL with my particular setup, we're going to be using the Intel graphics processor to try and do the picture-picture, -picture, motion blur, and color correction. I don't want the integrated graphics processor playing any of the special effects. I just want it to be used to encode and decode video for playback and rendering within Premiere Pro. Obviously, there's the software-only option, but if you've got the hardware, like a dedicated graphics card, you won't want to select this particular option. I also want to mention if you have an iMac that has a dedicated ATI graphics card, then you may want to opt for OpenCL. This is really important to get this 100% correct. Like I said, for my system, this is exactly how I want it set up to get the best performance. If you want to make use of Intel's QuickSync when rendering out H.264 files, it's very easy to do. You go over to the menu bar where it says File. You'll scroll down to the Export option. You'll select Media. If you go to the Video tab, you'll see the option to use hardware encoding. When you opt for hardware encoding, it will use Intel's QuickSync. If you use software encoding, it will not use Intel's QuickSync. That's all there really is to it. Installing ASIO for all drivers on a Windows PC might help real-time performance and real-time playback depending on what type of audio and video hardware you're using. Once the ASIO for all driver is installed, it's easy to enable it when using Premiere Pro. You simply go over to the menu bar, select Edit, scroll down to Preferences, and then select Audio Hardware. 
Here is where you'll have the option to make use of the ASIO for all driver. If you select the ASIO for all driver, you will get this pop up. Simply hit yes. Obviously, if you install the ASIO for all drivers on your computer system, you're not going to have the exact same options that I have. You're just going to have to try and make alterations and hopefully you'll improve your real-time performance. You may or may not. For example, if you're using Windows 8 with an ATI graphics card and you're trying to output the audio through the graphics card to your computer monitor and you notice you're getting stuttery playback, it may or may not help your stuttery playback. If you have a Windows 10 computer with an NVIDIA graphics card and you have a Thunderbolt 3 audio device and you notice stutter during playback when using Premiere Pro, the ASIO for all driver may or may not help for your real-time playback. I want to say that it won't hurt to install the ASIO for all driver if you're using Premiere Pro because if it doesn't help fix the problem, you don't have to use the ASIO for all driver. If you upgrade Premiere Pro, the audio and video settings that I demonstrated in this video can become altered. So it's real important that you check and make sure that your computer system is optimized for the hardware that you have in it.